Hey guys, I wanted to show you something that I love to do on blues tunes, rockabilly tunes, country tunes, and that's use sixths. I use I make licks and melodies using major and minor sixths. So that's the interval of a sixth. I'm gonna stay in the key of G today. I'm gonna to talk kind of fast. But what I'm doing is playing, let's just start with the root of the chord on the first string and the third of the chord on the third string. You can do these across any strings, but for today, we're just gonna focus on the first string and the third string. So I've got a G on the top and a B on the third string. That's gonna, those are the notes of a major third. So you probably, but I've actually put the root above it and it's gonna be a sixth. I've got, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna tell you the lower note and then the higher note. So I've got four and three, five and five, seven and seven, Nine and eight, ten and ten, twelve and twelve, fourteen and thirteen, sixteen and fifteen. So, now why I'm doing that is I'm actually harmonizing a G7 scale or a G mixolydian scale. Those names sound kind of complicated. If you don't know what that is, that's okay. What we're looking at is it's the perfect scale for a home bass G7 chord want to get really um, technical, it's also the notes of a C major scale starting from a G. That's okay. We're not, we don't have to go into that. What I want you to do, play a scale with those six. And it might sound a little wacky to you up here beforehand because you're probably used to hearing a major scale. Are good too. That would be for some maybe like a ballad in G. Anyway, we're gonna use those to make very cool little walk-ups and lines in all kinds of tunes. So if you're on their home base of G, those three right there make excellent licks. So you'll say you're playing a phrase. up to the C chord. Great place to start that. And if you were, you know, you happen to be playing it like you were just kind of improv with your whatever licks you had. And you wanted to lead up, you go. way to lead up and you hear it on a lot of Dwight Yoakam stuff you hear it on a lot of sets or stuff perfect lead up to the four chord well once you get to the four chord why not do it there so you could do the same pattern of course it's gonna take a little bit of practice to get it down where you can go up and down the guitar but we'll just start with that the first three you don't need to play the whole scale every time you use it okay so for each chord, you can use the same ideas, walk ups and walk downs, same licks, create your licks here. So you're on G, start with this guy. That's a good one to lead right up to a C chord. In fact, you hear it all over um, sets or stuff. You hear it on a lot of country records, a lot of uh, Dwight Yoakam and stuff, he uses all that. He, you know, there, you can even bend these a little bit. First three, you can get real cray. Let's do it on one. We'll do it on four. Good, let's do it on five. I'm talking about one being G, four being C, and D being five. So if you could do it on all three of those, you're ready to really explore and make your own really cool solos with these simple sixths on the first string and the third string. So let's, uh, let's actually give it a try. I'm just gonna kind of go for it. A little improv over here. So I 
purposely stuck with just those three. On the top, that's Do, Re, Mi, if you want to think of it like that. On the third string, it's going to be Mi, Re, um, da, Mi, Fa, So, Mi, Fa, So. Just using that on each chord, jumping around. The root on the top, the third on the third string, we're going to go down a whole step. That's going to give me the seventh and the ninth of that chord, so I'm still thinking G. Very nice, you just fill a lot of space, it's kind of like a piano riff. You hear piano players do that all the time. And it sounds super cool, super classic. Let's do it on a C chord, so we're ready for the four chord. So I'm on nine and eight. Nine on the third string, eight on the first string. Five chord, the, the D chord. And if you you know, maybe you're not too savvy on all the scales all over the whole guitar, or even knowing the names of the notes on the whole guitar, which you definitely want to do that. That opens up a whole world for you. But if you're not savvy with that, that's okay. You can actually just look at oh hey look I got this bar chord where I'm starting my G bar chord where I'm starting is actually where my middle finger goes down on my G bar chord. And the note on the first string is actually what I was barring on the first string. So you can find it that way. I really like to get my students having easy strategies to play the stuff that they want to play. So not every song is a new, whole new experience where they have to learn a bunch of new patterns. It's going to be the same thing on each chord. So G, I'm taking the third and the root on C here. I'm taking the third and the root. D, same thing. So now that we got that, let's improvise with that. purposely stuck with that lick and just made that work over each chord. That's a great exercise just to improve your phrases in general. Now, let's use the going up and the going down. Exclusively. We're not going to do any other notes. We're just going to stay on each chord. So we're going to go G. When the C chord is happening, we're going to use this C. When the D chord is happening, we're going to do the same thing, but on a D. Same pattern starting from each chord. trying to only play what works on each one of those chords, really outlining the licks and the sixths of each scale that matches the chord. You'll find that when you're playing blues stuff, anything blues based, it's going to be more about the chord. It's going to be off the chord, not just one scale that fits over the whole, the whole song like maybe we work on a pop tune. So. Doing it that way, so where I'm really isolating, I'm only going to play these phrases as the chords come up, will train you in a, in a very, very nice way that your phrases sound good. So once you have that down, then you can play, you can improv on it as much as you want to, and try to hit those six that lead into other chords. The people listening to your solo will love it. It'll... <laughs> Let's do it one more time. 
time. We'll do it one more time, and this time I will play the G stuff up here. A little thick on the back of the Gretsch. I'm bringing my thumb around. Normally I wouldn't really like my thumb around the front, but to get up here on the Gretsch, I'm gonna try it an octave above. Let's give it a, give it a bash. Pretty cool though. All right, now that I really like. So I would probably take that for a solo. When I got to the five chord, I went up on the five. And then when I went to the four chord, I went down. The trick is to land. This, this right here, the first one you're starting with, with the root on the on the first string and the third on the third string, you really want to land on when on when that chord happens on the downbeat. That's when you would land there. So it sounds a little, it would sound a little wacky if you got there before the chord actually landed. And you'll you, as you work with these, you'll start to notice that like, oh, okay. So if I'm coming down from the four, you'll start to get your strategies. You're like, oh, I don't want to land there yet. You might go half step from where you were that's a whole nother bag and you know you could take this for hours you could take this for months and weeks and keep developing it and have a lot of great phrases i actually before we go i want to try it on a different kind of tune a rockabilly tune a fast one see if we can make it happen bridge pickup a little more twang okay there we go That's gonna take some work to make those sound really good, but if you can put them in there in the right spot, kind of how Setzer does on uh, Rock This Town, you know, at the begin and uh, the second solo of Rock This Town, he's going. He's like, Super cool, and he's that would be he's using the second string and the fourth string to do the same effect in the key of D. We're gonna stay in G. Let's try maybe one more tune. This one, uh, like a country tune or like a Johnny Cash vibe. Let's try it. moving pretty quick but you can get a lot out of that. I'm gonna try this one more time. See if I can really stop thinking and just let it flow. We'll see what happens. That is just so satisfying to play those sixths. Really takes just a basic scale that you've probably played a thousand times and opens up some phrases. I hope this really gave you guys some ideas and opened up something for you on playing sixths. Now we could do it with thirds. We could do the same thing with thirds instead of sixths. Um, that's also a lot of fun. There's a million ways to play them all over the guitar. I have another video where I show how to do this like chicken picking using the sixth on the fifth string and the third string to play in the key of A, making this crazy walk up here. Super cool. It's all coming from knowing sixths. And so if you like the style of playing, it'll be time well spent. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you got something out of this lesson. 
Hit me with a comment, subscribe if you are just checking out this channel for the first time. We're starting a little tribe here of, of improvisers, people who are into twangy stuff, rockabilly, blues, country, all that stuff. And if you want to get into some full courses, go to blackbeltmusician.com. I am working on my blue belt course right now. I'd love to see you over there too. Thanks, everybody.